This short video shows basic concept of forecasting to be used in the airline business. So let me start with one example. Back in 2013, as I am from Spain, living in Istanbul, I wanted to know the possibilities of flying from Istanbul to Madrid. And I saw that only Turkish Airlines was flying at the time. At the same time, we had the low-cost airline called Pegasus, which was heavily expanding, growing very fast. And I asked the general management, why not opening a route between Sabiha Inter International Airport in Istanbul to Madrid? So the first thing they had to do is say, well, are we going to make money by putting this route on? So in order to try to analyze that, they have to look at how many passengers they thought they were willing to, to, to travel in that route. Because that number of passengers could help us to make, uh, to make estimate the uh, revenue, uh, cost, and so on. So we can start to see that forecasting is something which is measured what is gonna, what is likely to happen in the future. In this case, after the analysis, they decide to launch the route in summer 2040. And I was very happy because Turkish Airlines was competing with Pegasus, so then the prices went down. So again, if we have to give a definition of forecasting, we can say that is what is likely to happen in the future. In the case which we just saw, normally we try to forecast number of passengers. So it's a way to try to predict how many passengers are going to travel, in this case, uh, between Madrid and uh, Istanbul and between Istanbul to Madrid. And it helps, in this case, the management of Pegasus Airlines to take a business decision whether to launch or not launch this route. But how long in the future we want to look at? Here, that's why we have a time frame. And it's divided into three. Short term, medium term, and long term. When look at medium term, it's one to three years. And it's the example we just mentioned, is to forecast number of passengers to launch a route. So what is called route planning. A short term is up to one year. For instance, when if the route has been decided to be open and you have to estimate the number of people working in Madrid, the station uh, personnel, then you could be talking about short-term forecasting. In this case, number of people needed in the station. And long-term is looking beyond three years. Here, one clear example is when uh, you forecast the number of aircraft that you need for the future. Normally, you look at long-term because uh, to order one aircraft and to receive the aircraft is a slow process, so you need to forecast long in advance. What are the methods to do forecasting? Well, basically, there are two main groups, which are uh, qualitative methods and quantitative methods. One example of qualitative methods applied to our example of Istanbul to Madrid route could be if imagine that Pegasus Airlines have done a, a questionnaire. So had asked different people on the street to say, OK, would you like to fly to Madrid? Are you interested to fly to Madrid? So they, they get a feeling whether people are interested to, to fly or not. And they make a, a market research about potential people. That could be qualitative data. Quantitative data is to estimate a number. In this case, again, in our example of Madrid uh, Istanbul route, is how many passengers in total are going to, are going to be flying in one year. That, uh, I, I use quantitative data for, for that. So if we concentrate on this second method, this quantitative data, I can look at two things to see, I mean, how is the economy? Uh, is people willing to travel to Madrid so they have money, so they are more willing to travel to Madrid, and so on. That could be one way to look at it. But the other thing is to say, how many people have been traveling in the past, either with Turkish Airlines or with other airlines via other destinations? How many people have been traveling so far in the last years between Istanbul and Madrid? So it will be to look at the past in order to predict the future. So when we look at the first one, it's called 
well, this quantitative casual method. So I will be looking at a function which looks at different variables. Could be the economy, could be the unemployment, business, etc. And with that, I'm going to try to calculate the demand. When I call to demand, I'm, to I'm talking to uh, passengers, for instance. So demand is how many passengers are willing to travel in that route. As more people uh, travel more when there, there, are, there is more money, normally there is a correlation between what is called GDP, gross domestic product, and the number of people willing to travel. But if there are more people willing to travel, also there are more aircraft needed in the, in the market. So one simple uh, function could be like a demand of aircraft is related to GDP and we can have a, a, a curve a, that is like that. So the more uh, GDP grows, the more demand of aircraft we have. That could be one example. The second quantitative methods was to look at time series. So is to see what has been passing in the past in order to predict the future. So I calculate a new demand function. And this is called quantitative time series. So in this time series, if we are here today, I can know what are the number of passengers who travel in the past, and I can estimate how many, travel, how many passengers are likely to travel in the future. That's the, the principle. When I look at those functions, this could be linear, they grow in these directions, or if they grow very fast, they might have other functions such as exponential, so they grow something like this. So let's apply this time series to a real example of the low-cost company EasyJet. What I did here was to look at the number of passengers who travel with EasyJet in this nine years period, from 2004 to 2012. And they are being represented in this axis. So that's the information I have from the past. But I want to calculate what happened in the future. So I need to create a, a demand function. Again, demand is looking for the number of passengers. That is equal a function that tells me the number of passengers based on a time, so on the future uh, time period. We saw before that a forecast uh, could, uh, the timeline could be uh, linear. So in this case, in this first uh, case, I assume that this number of passengers follow a line. So I calculate the equation of that line. And what I do is, okay, I, I, I introduce year number 10, and then I get how many passengers, which in this case is 73.3 million passengers. This is my estimation for 2030, using linear time series. If I use the exponential time series, so the curve will do something like this, I assume like a, a, a faster growth, then the question I get is this one. And if I introduce year number 10, I get 68 million passengers. So this could be uh, an estimation by using a linear uh, time series or an exponential time series. So as a summary, we can say that uh, forecasting, which is what is likely to happen in the future, is to predict the future, is doing to do an analysis of data with also some planning. And it helps, as we saw the case of Pegasus, to make business decision. Do I open a route or do I or I don't open a route? Or where do I open a route? The, the, there are different uh, forecasting methodologies, qualitative and quantitative, and this is the one that we use, quantitative time series that we just saw the example for this year. Thank you very much.